Okay. Thank you very much, and thank thank you for uh, the organizing uh, committee for this uh, for organizing this uh, conference. So I am uh, Bishir De Dirizgi uh, uh, from the photovoltaic laboratory uh, of the Research and Technology Center of Energy, uh, Bursa de Techno Park in Tunisia, and I will present my work uh, about the ambient air fabrication of mixed cation hybrid perovskite then films for photovoltaic applications. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, let's start with this uh, uh, famous uh, chart, uh, an, error, an error chart, which gives the uh, evolution of uh, the power conversion efficiency for different uh, photovoltaic technologies. And uh, 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 interestingly, we can see here that uh, for perovskite uh, on the right, for the perovskite uh, solar cells, solar cell technology, um, the, 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 the power conversion efficiency uh, have reached the, uh, more than 25% in only a few years, which uh, means that the, the, this is a, um, an interesting uh, photovoltaic technologies. So um, in, uh, next, next uh, slide, please. Uh, so uh, it, it is a very interesting uh, photovoltaic technologies. Uh, however, uh, there are some challenges, technological and scientific uh, challenges for these technologies. Um, one of the challenges is the, uh, that perovskite, hybrid perovskite uh, materials um, requires a well-controlled uh, inert atmosphere uh, to, 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 to be prepared uh, we, with only uh, trust levels of oxygen and water, which is uh, 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 incompatible with the low-cost mass production of uh, perovskite solar cells. Uh, on the other hand, the, uh, these materials cannot be uh, uh, often prepared under ambient air because uh, they are uh, phase transition from perovskite polymorph, which is the, uh, the, uh, the perovskite, the alpha phase uh, perovskite, uh, perovskite phase, to the undesirable non perovskite polymorph. And if we if we uh, if we want to prepare uh, hybrid perovskite solar cells under ambient air, we need to avoid the interaction of the ambient moisture and oxygen with the, the perovskite precursors, and we also need to control the tolerance factor, uh, we which can be uh, adjusted by controlling the composition of the perovskite film. Uh, next, please. So. In our group, uh, we have su successfully prepared uh, perovskite, uh, hybrid perovskite materials in uh, ambient uh, air conditions. So uh, we have used a two-step spin coating process uh, and the, the deposition was pr processed in fully ambient air with a relative humidity of uh, 60% and uh, at ambient temperature. And uh, we have used a two-step spin coating process. In the first step, we have deposited uh, a mixture of uh, formamidinium iodide plus uh, cesium iodide plus uh, uh, lead iodide. And we, we got uh, an intermediate film. In the second step, we uh, we add uh, a mixture of, uh, or we add the uh, formamidinium iodide, uh, which is dissolved in isopropanol, and we obtain uh, a perovskite uh, film. And uh, in this process, we have varied uh, the CSE concentration, the cesium iodide concentration added uh, during the first step. Uh, and uh, our objective was to stabilize the photoactive perovskite phase in ambient conditions via a composition engineering approach and to study the microstructure evolution and correlation with electronic and optical properties. Next, please. Next, please. Next slide, please. Level. Next slide. I'm waiting for the next slide, please.
I think we've got connection problems somewhere. Sorry, ah, okay. folks. Ah, okay, I see you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we have started with uh, the investigation of the intermediate film, which uh, uh, greatly uh, uh, affect the, which can affect the, the, the final perovskite film. So for the intermediate film, we have uh, measured the uh, X-ray diffraction patterns, and we uh, we can see that the, the that we can obtain the crystalline uh, intermediate complex, which is formed of a mix of uh, uh, iodide, uh, lead iodide, cesium iodide, and uh, formamidinium uh, iodide. And the crystallinity of the intermediate uh, of the intermediate complex is uh, signif uh, significantly uh, improved when we uh, increase the ratio between the cesium iodide and the uh, lead iodide. And this result was confirmed by photoluminescence, uh, room temperature photoluminescence measurements. And we can see here that for, um, for uh, a ratio of 0 0.35, we obtain uh, a crystal, the crystalline phase, which is uh, around uh, 730 nanometers. Um, and uh, uh, based on these results, we can uh, conclude that there is a significant decrease of the um, of the secondary phase of uh, Fa uh, PbI3 peak, and an obvious increase of the Pl peak, uh, which uh, attributed to the uh, intermediate complex, the crystalline phase of the intermediate complex. Uh, that means that uh, there is an optimum of CSI amount. Uh, for uh, for the uh, uh, to to obtain the crystalline phase of uh, the perovskite materials. Next, please. Okay, um, we have studied the the structure and morphology of the perovskite uh, of the hybrid perovskite uh, films as a function of the ratio between the cesium iodide and the the lead uh, iodide, and we can see in the XRD patterns that we have for low um, low ratios, uh, we have obtained the perovskite phase with one zero zero directions, and when we increase the ratio uh, up to zero point thirty five, the green uh, the green uh, uh, pattern, uh, we can see that there is a crystal orientation change from 100 to 111 direction. Um, then uh, for uh, higher uh, ratios, um, uh, we have a phase segregation and the formation of uh, delta CS PBI3 uh, phase, uh, which, uh, which appears uh, with a diffraction peak uh, uh, appearing at uh, 9. Do you have a minute left? Okay, so uh, for the scanning electron microscopy uh, image, we can see that the the the, the sample uh, elaborated at uh, zero point thirty five uh, uh, is the best uh, one uh, with a closely packed quasi pinhole free uh, film morphology. Next, please. Okay, uh, I think that we don't have enough time, but there is, uh, we have measured the, the optical properties of uh, uh, of our films, and we we observe a blue shift of the band gap, except for air equal to zero point three five, and these results are in good agreement with the theoretical the, uh, with the it's time. results. Hmm. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, it's time. Time up. Okay. If if I can just conclude uh, okay. this presentation. Okay. Okay. You've got a minute. La, la, last slide, please. Okay, the last slide. Okay, so uh, in in uh, this work, uh, perovskite films uh, were successfully prepared in ambient air via a modified two-step process. And the combination of experimental uh, and numerical simulations 
showed that uh, there is an increase of the band gap energy, which is consistent with the reduction of the unit cell volume in good agreement with the results supported in the literature. And uh, via the numerical simulation, we have shown a decrease of the PBI band length and uh, the collateral volume happens as uh, upon cesium incorporation. And uh, interestingly, for 35% CSE concentration, we have a crystal orientation change from 100 to 111 direction revealed by XRD results with a strong attraction between uh, formamidinium cation and iodide uh, of the PBI6 uh, octahedra. Uh, and uh, this uh, change uh, gives a stabilization of the, allows the, the stabilization of the black perovskite photoactive phase with a decrease of the band gap uh, up to 1.52 electron volts. And for future work, we, we try to integrate the optimized perovskite dim uh, films in solar cell divides, and uh, we will evaluate their photovoltaic performance. Thank you for your attention.